Hi there. I am trying a couple of things. And this is a lesson on Japanese wood blocking. Uh, Mary Kassa, and I am Lisa from Lisa Arts. Um, I just wanted to flip through and show you some wonderful things about Japanese woodblock art. I want you to notice how beautiful and colorful it is and how stylized it is. Um, nobody is trying to be anatomically correct or get an exact portraiture, but this is very often storytelling art. You can see the story up here, the words, um, the character, the wonderful, um, wow, it looks like she almost has a whole chicken down here by her arm. And she looks like she's holding something very ornate, possibly a mirror, wonderful textiles. It's just very different from art that may have been going on at the same time in the Western world, um, where everything was very symmetrical, dark. The storytelling might be, look back here in the corner where there's a family. There's a whole um, storytelling in what the wardrobe was, but the person is standing posed, symmetrical. Here's another one, even though she's leaning a bit She's very symmetrical right down to the part in her hair and the looking straight forward. At the same time, this was the kind of storytelling art you might see in uh, Japan or even China. China used uh, storytelling art a lot because there's so many Chinese dialects and languages that it was a better way to communicate um, to tell the story through artwork. And uh, let the person tell the story verbally from the pictures. So I just lost my place a little bit. Thank you. I'm getting used to all this technology. Um, here's a wonderful one with the screen pulled down that's semi-transparent and the face being reflected in the mirror. I want you to notice that the eyes are stylized that the, the uh, nose is pretty much just an L. The mouth is like a sideways little heart. Um, and people are not being symmetrical. They're sitting off to the side. They're doing ordinary things, sitting on a park bench, daydreaming, or exciting things like this warrior guy fighting off a fire or a tsunami or playing with a baby the tiger, look at the mouth of the tiger. It shows that it's very muscular and strong, but it's not trying to look anatomically correct. This woman is just brushing her hair. A lot of times the art was, I'm looking for a certain picture, um, made to fit on a folding screen if it wasn't panels just for artwork. Now the reason I brought up our Western art was about the time right as the Impressionists came along. Um, there was more travel to the East, the Eastern Hemisphere, and great objects of art were brought back. But they might be like a large vase or an or urn, and it might be wrapped in paper or newspaper. Something like this could, storytelling art could be printed on the paper. And uh, sometimes it was delivered just as art, but sometimes it was the wrapping paper. And the Impressionists began to see this artwork. Um, people playing music, people in parades, people making tea. And the reaction was, as change was going on in the art world, you won't even be able to guess this artist. This is Monet. Doesn't look like a Monet we know, but he did the woman in the red kimono. Has all her fans in the background on the wall. She's standing in a less posed position, almost like she's twirling and bright colors, but clearly a Western, person with blonde hair and um, 
not Asian art, but Asian art inspired. Um, sometimes this artwork was made just to put on a fan or a folding screen. That's why sometimes you get a shape or a, or a, um, or it's sectional. Um, this woman's just washing, it looks like washing the laundry, like washing out a scarf. And look at the beautiful textiles and the drape of the kimonos, the ornaments in the hair, and again, the stylized features. And if you stretched some of these people out into their, um, into their full body, they probably wouldn't be the right proportions. But this did inspire, especially one particular artist we're going to look at today, Mary Cassatt, who also did ordinary daily things, bathing the baby, the tea party. This looks like a study for her wonderful tea party that I'll have to um, post a picture of later because I forgot to include it in this PowerPoint. Or this one where if you look in the background here, you see the small background that we saw back in some of the uh, Japanese pieces where there's a background in the back, there's a background back here that looks like it's just a um, miniature landscape, sometimes almost feeling disconnected from, from the, the, uh, the piece, like here where it almost looks like a window or the landscape is almost a piece of art on the wall. So Mary Cassatt used that. Here's some art on the wall. Here's the train piece with the landscape in the background. The casual way the mother is with the child, very unposed. A person just licking the stamps, but look at the beautiful textile of the wallpaper and the um, dress. They've even made the hair sort of look dark and the face look as though it could have been an Asian piece. And this one, the dressmaker hemming the skirt. Just a very ordinary everyday, someone bathing, somebody brushing their teeth. So for your project today, I would like you to, this is my paper here, I would like you to take one of these pictures, whether it's the Mary Cassatt or it's the one of the Japanese wood blocks. And I want you to try and to replicate what you see. So, I am going to review what we saw. Um, the face very often is just a curve with a series of curves for the hair, for the ornamental combs in the hair and the piles of the hair. Now I'm drawing this in pen. Uh, you may want to draw it in pencil first because a lot of times if I go back to shade something in and I use a lighter color, sometimes that will drag in. And more so if I use the black ink. You see how it grayed it right there. Um, the faces are often just sort of an L nose and just sort of oblong shapes for the eyes. The mouth may just be almost like a sideways heart. Um, anyway, it's all very stylized. The clothing just seems to be layer upon layer of fabric. And the person's pose might be just whatever suits or fits, because maybe she has her teapot here. I just realized you can't see. Maybe she has her little teapot here and I just put what fits. And then later go back in and bring these out with whatever textile patterns you wanna make. Each layer probably has its own 
stripes. And then at the end, you can come back with your marker and give it that look like the wood blocks where it has the really bold color to it. But like I said, I would not put that black on and then come back with the flesh color because you're probably going to dirty up your markers. That time it didn't, but you could. Um, and so I want you to, I will post the pictures or you can freeze this video or you can Google your own Japanese woodblock uh, pictures and find one that you want to copy. So in copying, you would be studying the colorful textiles, the not symmetrical or not posed, the um, casual and ordinary everyday or exciting storytelling activity that's going on. The way it's not anatomically correct and again, the stylized features. Um, so that's our lesson for today. Um, have fun doing it and post me back with your final drawings. Thank you.